Okay. So first thing I want you to, so on this independent and dependent, we're going to start putting some numbers in there. Okay. And then when we put numbers in there, we're going to write that Y equals MX plus B equation for the situation. So that like, if I say the number of hours I work and the money I make, well, the money I make is dependent on the hours I work, right? So we got to write an equation that's going to tell us, well, what if I work eight hours? Well, what if I work 12 hours? What if I work 32 hours? How much money am I going to make? So that's the equation that we're going to write. And it's in that format. So on your Jan, at the top of your Jan paper, write your equation. Y equals MX plus B. Now, what do we know the y variable is? It is always our dependent, yes. And then the x variable is my, uh -huh. and now here's one that I got to kind of change up on you because I was calling it slope, right? But now we're, we're writing these word problems. We're going to go back to last year. And what was it you worked on last year that was the same thing as slope? Rates. Okay? Slope is rate. Rate is slope. Sometimes, like, when we're on that graph and we've got the x, y axis and we're just specifically talking about coordinate points, then we're calling it slope. But when we're in the real world, slope really is just the rate, the rate of pay. How much do you get paid every hour? How much does it cost for each apple? How fast do you run? How fast do you walk? All right. How much each ticket to the play costs? All those things are rates. And that's what we're going to be putting in for our slope. So right now, I know you've reminded yourself on your notes, why is your dependent X is your independent, slope is rate, right? This is stuff you've got down. Now, maybe I'm saving money in the bank. Well, I already got $20. That 20 would be my starting point. Maybe I'm going to keep track of how fast one of you grow. Maybe we'll start putting a line, a tree up on here and, and start marking your height. And every week we'll mark your heart and see how fast you grow. Well, you're already a certain height, right? Okay, so that's your starting point. Okay, there's just one number. Write this equation down. Dependent is equal to rate times independent plus starting point. It is the same thing. Y is equal to M times X plus B. Lulu, is everything showing up on your screen okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We got everything putting in our notes. A lot of times in math, we do when we write notes, all we do is a bunch of numbers. And we don't write ourselves any notes. We don't tell ourselves any instructions. I want you to try to start working on writing little notes to self. Note to self. I need to remember that Y is independent. Did I just say that right? No, I didn't, did I? 
That Y is dependent, right? Okay. We want these math journals to be something, guys. Well, I didn't want to do that. All right, so here is your first problem, okay? And we got to take this problem. We got to take Jan here. You are a genius, y'all. We got to take Jan and we've got to write this equation. So the first thing, I want you to read it and then I want you to let go of the words that are on there. And don't try to focus in on the words, but on the situation and tell me the two things that are happening. Jan is taking a job as a sales clerk at the dress store. She will be paid $8.75 per hour. So this is a really, really old question where $8.75 used to be pretty good. All right. Forget about the dress store. Does it matter for this situation? No. Does it matter that her name is Jan? No. Okay. Does it matter that her job is a sales clerk? All of this is just information out there. You're looking for those two things in this situation that are going to be my two variables. And then you're looking for the rate. So what do you think the two things that are going to be variables are going to be in this situation? Okay. You're right on top of it because you know what? Everything we need to know is grouped in, okay? Put that word, let's make a little box on our notes or a little cloud or something. Put stars on it because this is very, very, very important. When I see that word per, each, every, any word that is there, my two variables are going to be connected to those words. Now, forget about the number. What is what per what here? Eight per hour. Yeah. Forget about the numbers. Just look at the things, the two things that are going to be changing. The pay and the hours. There is my dependent. And there is my independent. So my dependent, I'm going to use P for pay, is equal to... And I'm going to use H. Now, what is my rate? How much does she get every hour? Eight seventy-five. Now, they, do they give us a starting point? Is there going to be any? Does she already have a certain amount of money? No, no starting point. So on this one. So what's my rule? P equals 875 times H. Okay? Now we could do a table and we could graph this. Now we could say, all right, we've got 8 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, and plug that in and find out how much she can get, and then we can put it on a graph. Okay? What do you think? A little confusing, pretty easy so far. No? The gra well, we're plotting those points. And you know what's going to be cool about these? Can she make a negative? Is she going to go into work and the boss is going to charge her money? So what do you think is going to happen when we start to graph where do you think we're going to be? Yeah, first quadrant because everything's going to be positive. All right, 
Shrek is making swamp stew. For every quart of stew, he needs three toes. For every quart of stew, he needs three toes. So what are the two things that are going to be changing? How much is, how many toes does Shrek need if he's making one quart? How many does he need if he's making two quarts? And three quarts. Right? So what's changing there? Quarts. And that quartz is going to be my dependent. Good. Because he's going to go get those toads, then make the stew, right? So what's the other one? What is how much stew he's going to make is going to depend on the toads. So that's my independent. My dependent is my Y. And my D independent is my X. All right, what's my rate? Good. That number three. There is your rate. Y equals MX. Do I have a starting point? Did they say anything about how many quarts of swamp stew Shrek has in his closet? Maybe he's got some hand up. So do I have a starting point? No. But what is, all right, what, what, we can use Y or maybe, and this is going to be totally up to you. I don't care which one you use. We could say Y or maybe a Q. For quarks, equal three times T, right? Okay, how are we doing, guys? Okay, I'm going to be quiet and let you look at... Carl. Oh, you know what I forgot to say? Because I meant to rearrange them. I know they're out of order from your paper. Did you find Shrek on your paper? Mm -hmm. It was down some. What you think? Give it a shot at it. Give it a pencil. Get the 
Boost is one, but what happens every ticket? What else changes every ticket? What do you think my two variables are, guys? All right, tickets, and I'm not sure we were kind of... Tickets is definitely one. What else? What happens every time I buy another ticket? Dollars. Dollars are changing, aren't they? The amount of dollars is changing. What's a word we could use for dollars? Money. Okay. Cost. Okay, what depends on what? Who's independent and who is dependent? Okay, so you order the number of tickets, then you pay, right? Okay, so I'm going to agree that tickets are going to be independent and money is going to be, because how much money I spend is going to, okay, good. All right, what's the rate? Six. Okay, so I'm going to say M, or I could write Y, that's going to be up to you, equals Remember, dependent equals rate times the independent. So what's my rate? And what's my independent? So T for tickets or X for independent. Mm -hmm. Do I have a starting point here? No. No start point, so there's my rule. Going okay so far? Okay. Let's see which one I have on here next. We do have some that are going to have a starting point. All right, Alana is raising money to go on a school trip by walking dogs. She charges $7 to walk a dog. How many dogs is a dog? One. One. Do we care why she's raising the money? No. No. Is, do we care that she's doing it by walking dogs? What do you think my two variables are charges okay and what is she charging so she's charging those dollars that's going to be one those dollars for each dog the number of dogs is going to be my next one and what's my rate So what do you think your equation should be? Okay, good. And what's another, what we could use for M and D? There you go. We could write Y equals 7X. Is it going to be any different? No. M, money, is my dependent. Y is my dependent, right? Sounds kind of like you're doing pretty good on these. So far, is it going pretty good? Okay, so what, if you are going to explain this to somebody in sixth period coming in, and they say, what did you do in math today? You go next period, you go in the study hall, and you meet your friend, and they say, what you do in math? What do I, and you start teaching them. What are some things that you might Say.
<laughs> oh. All right. Well, you got to come up with some questions for me so I can, because if I just keep repeating myself, I don't think I'm going to help you in any way if you're not understanding. So what could we... What could we say? A confusing part of this could be. Okay. That is one of the hardest parts, I think, deciding who's dependent. And, and we're always going to know the independent by trying to figure out the dependent. That's going to help. But what would happen first? Right? Now, is she going to walk the dog first, or is she going to get paid first? Well, she's kind of do, most times, now there might be somebody that's going to go, oh honey, I'm going to go ahead and give you your check. And, but, for the most part, you expect to do the job, then get paid, right? Mm -hmm. So, the job is the dog. So, I think I would, that kind of helps me to say, okay, well... That's the independent. What else could we say? Has the independent and dependent ever been a number? No. The numbers are always going to be the rates, and we haven't had one yet, but the starting point. Those are always going to be numbers, but... We call it the independent variable. We call it the dependent variable. So we know that's always going to be a letter, right? All right, let's try another one and see. All right, a hot air balloon starts out at four feet in the air and is going up. I need a space there. Up at a rate of two feet per second. What's going to happen first? What is that one thing I told you? Make sure you put in your notes if you have any kind of, it's going to be independent. Any kind of time. Put that in your notes, guys. Anytime I have anything that measures time, that's always going to be independent. Do I have anything that measures time on here? What's that? Okay, so there's my second. Independent. What else changes every second? The feet. Good. See that word per? It's always going to be dependent over independent. If you see that word per, you are golden because per sits right between my two variables. All right, what's the rate? Okay, because it's going up two feet. Per second. Do I have a starting point this time? Yes. Where is it going to start out at? So Y equals or F for feet equals 2S or 2, nope, said that wrong. Or 2s and then this time I do have a starting point yes how are we doing a little better All right, I'm, I'm throwing you a curveball on this one, so I want you to, 
to really think about the situation. I want you to imagine this candle and think about what happens when you're burning a candle. Okay, so what are my two things? If the height is dependent on how long it's burning, then my height is measured in, and how long it's burning is measured in. Now I want you to look what this word per does for you. You see that word per, and you got your answer right there, don't you? And it's always centimeters per, so it's dependent per independent. So I know dependent, independent. What is my rate on this one? Okay. What's my starting point? Okay, so we start out at 21, right? Here's my curveball on this one. If I start out at 21 and I start burning that candle, is that candle going to get taller or shorter? So what kind of a one do you think that's going to be? Yeah, that's got to be a negative one. Do you see why? All right, so what is my centimeters equal negative one times the minutes plus 21? All right, now let me ask you this. How tall is my candle going to be after eight minutes? Because here's what I'm going to be, here's your questions going to be. How tall is my candle after eight minutes? And you want to know what I'm asking you? I am asking you what is F of... Right? So if this is my X, which is my independent, then this 8 has to go in for the M. Right? Equals negative 1 times 8 plus 21. How tall is my candle going to be? After eight minutes, 13 centimeters. Good. Yes? Because I'm going to, I'm not only going to be asking you to write that rule, but right after writing that rule, I'm going to ask you a question about that rule. All right, let's go. I think I have one more. No? Is that all of them? Oh my goodness. All right. Um, you are working on John. Okay. That one goes into your journal notes. Okay. That's for you to reference and help. Your grade is going to be John Watts 
at a constant rate of speed. Miss Graham's got to look at something because I think Miss Graham messed up on something. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. I think we might have to go back to Shrek, guys. Did we write, Stu, are quarts equal 3T? Mm -hmm. That's wrong. Codes equal 3Q. The number of codes I need is going to equal 3 times each quart. Oh, my goodness. Look, guys, I'm in front of all y'all, and I messed it up, and I'm still... Alive. The number of toads I need is going to depend on the number of quarts that I need. So I've told you completely wrong, and I am sorry. Toads is equal to three times Q. Lulu, did you find your papers in your um, classwork tab? Okay. Um, do mention to mom, if you want, I can put a packet of papers for the week in the office. Otherwise, when we're doing them online, let's try to make a copy and use Cami. I'm scared of Cami because I don't know how to use it, but you guys are smarter than me, so you can use it. Okay. You've got 13 problems with John, guys. No, uh, that was just loving us and I'll let me get you more and I'll see. Okay. This is today's. Stop the recording. Lulu, I'm going to stop recording, but I'm leaving the meat open if you have any questions, okay? Okay.